So uh, really, my, my guest this evening needs no introduction, and certainly to the people in the room, uh, you've already been introduced, but for the people who are listening to this or watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, my guest this evening is Dr. Neil Barnard, the author of the new book, Your Body Imbalance. Welcome back to the show, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. You know, for the past, jeez, I don't know, three or four months, I've had the opportunity to speak to so many people who were featured in this book. And Dr. Barnard, I mean, these stories are just, I mean, some of them will bring you to tears, the transformations that we've, we've heard about. Earlier this evening, you were talking about Catherine Lawrence and going down to Dallas and, and interviewing her in her store now where she, she pays for the knowledge, what she's learned. It, it was just, I mean, that almost moved me to tears. And uh, it really struck me, the name of her, her business is Food Saved Me. How great is that? How appropriate is that? Yeah, it, it, it really is true. And I found out a long time ago, people need to not just hear all the facts, they need to hear about a person who actually did it. And so they're all real people. And they've all had these experiences and they really do come alive. And um, I think one of the questions that a lot of people wonder about, especially as they're just getting going uh, plant-based and maybe they're on the younger side or, or maybe they're going through the change and the hormones are just, they're just going crazy and they're having issues with their skin. Well, you and I were out in Los Angeles not too long ago and had the opportunity to sit down with twin sisters, Lena and Randa Nelson. Growing up had horrific acne, acne like you would not believe. They made some dietary adjustments and lo and behold, their skin now is flawless. So really, how strong is that connection between what it is we're eating and our skin? You know, it's, it's the kind of thing where people have looked at it for a long period of time. And for many years, doctors poo-pooed the role of diet. They would say, chocolate, it's all in your mind. It doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, actually, when we've looked into this, um, the reason that people have discounted the chocolate connection was that there was a researcher in the Philadelphia area who did some experiments on prisoners where, yes, I'm not making this up, he fed, uh, he went into a prison outside of Philadelphia and fed half of the participants uh, chocolate bars and gave the other half some very fatty bars that weren't chocolate, uh, but were greasy stuff. And he couldn't tell the difference in the reaction between the two, so he said, well, I guess diet doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> And it was, oh, I forgot to tell you, it was funded by the chocolate industry for this. <laughs> um, and he got into a lot of trouble later for much worse experiments where he was in, uh, uh, exposing uh, prisoners to toxic drugs and things for, <laughs> and, and became a really uh, kind of a pariah. Uh, but, but pediatricians all remembered this and they kind of repeat chocolate doesn't matter. Um, it turns out it probably does, as, as, as well as dairy products seem to play a role as well. And what Nina and Randa found was they went vegan, but, but that alone didn't do it because they were eating a fair amount of greasy things. And when they got the oils out of their diet completely, that's what tipped them back into really good health. So we're thinking um, getting the animal products out of your diet is a critical step, but you have to do a little bit more than that. Another thing that really surprised me putting out this, this series of podcasts for Your Body and Balance was the episode that we did on thyroids. And, you know, so many people beforehand had written in and they had been asking for months, please, can you do a show on thyroids? Can you do a show on thyroids? I never realized what a big problem this is for so many people. And then we get an opportunity to speak to Wendy Sachs and Dr. Mike Cowan, a neurosurgeon who had no idea about the connection between diet and thyroid health. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure, well, the symptoms are very vague. You know, your thyroid is at the base of your neck and it cranks out thyroid hormone. And if it's not cranking out enough, you, you're feeling sluggish and cold and t tired and you might gain a little weight, but these symptoms are so vague that doctors often take a long time to figure out that it's low thyroid. Um, but, but once they figure it out, the blood tests are really pretty easy to do. And there, there are two reasons for running low thyroid. The first is you don't have enough iodine in your diet. And for most Americans, that's not an issue because in 1924, the Morton Company put out those salt containers with the girl with the umbrella on them. They're, it's iodized salt, and so you, you get iodized salt. But being cool people, um, we have Himalayan salt or kosher salt or sea salt, and they don't have the iodine in it, so people tend to run low. Unless if they love sea vegetables, which is the best source, you get plenty of iodine. Um, by the way, sometimes milk has iodine in it because cows 
tend to dribble fecal material on their udder, and you don't want that in the milk, um, at least not alive. So, 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 if, am I cheering you up with this? I mean, that's just. Yeah. Anyway, well, what happens is, before you put the milking machine on, you spray them with an iodine-containing disinfectant, and as some of the disinfectant dribbles into the milk, you'll get iodine that way. Um, <laughs> but a better source is, uh, go to the sushi bar. Don't have the fish sushi. Have the nori roll. Um, that is, uh, we've got cucumber or seaweed or. Uh, or uh, sweet potatoes or something like that inside. The nori is very high in iodine, as are all sea vegetables. The, now, I gotta tell you, the bigger reason for hypothyroidism in the United States is not iodine, it's an antibody reaction. Apparently, people are reacting to foods, perhaps dairy or meat. We see much more hypothyroidism in meat eaters and in ovo-lacto-vegetarians, cheese eaters, compared to vegans. So you're talking about hypothyroidism. Same, yeah. same principles apply for hyperthyroidism? The, yes, and the difference is that in one state, in, in one case, your body is making antibodies to something that are then attacking the thyroid's ability to make thyroid hormone. In the other case, these antibodies are attacking the regulatory system of the thyroid so that it can't turn off. Um, but it's the same issue. And getting away from animal products seems to, to be helpful. So Mike, who you mentioned, is a neurosurgeon. And after five years of hypothyroidism, just went on this healthy plant-based diet, and you now he's totally clean. And I think we need more research in this area, but there is no risk to getting the junk off your plate. Another person who I had the privilege of speaking with as we're putting this series together was a gentleman who was diabetic. And this story was, it really particularly struck me, not just because he's a fellow weight loss success story, but because he looked he, he, the doctor puts him on insulin, and he looks the doctor right in the eye. He's like, I'm not going to stay on this. And the doctor's like, well, once you go on it, you're going to be on it for life. Nobody ever comes off of it. And Bob Blackburn, God bless him, looks the doctor right in the eye. He says, watch me. How, I mean, how big of a role does diet play in terms of diabetes? And is sugar really the huge culprit that everybody believes it is? Yeah, uh, no, type 2 diabetes is not caused by eating sugar. Um, it's caused by a, a mechanism that's a little convoluted, but once people understand it, they suddenly have the ability to make the disease go away. Um, sugar is actually a good thing if it's glucose in your blood going to your muscles to power them. That's what's supposed to happen. Or glucose is also good if it's in your blood going to your brain to power your brain. That's what glucose is supposed to do. But without insulin, the, the hormone insulin made in your pancreas, the glucose can't get into your muscles. It can't get into your liver. And the reason that, it, uh, that people end up with, with diabetes is that n although normally insulin arrives at the surface of a muscle cell and escorts the sugar inside, if there's too much fat buildup in the cell, insulin can't do it. it, it, can't, it the insulin won't work. So the, the reason that people get type 2 diabetes is the buildup of fat inside their muscle cells and in their liver cells. And they could be real thin. This is not belly fat. It's fat inside the muscle and liver cells. And if you've never heard that before, um, back in 2003, NIH funded our research team to test a low-fat vegan diet for its ability to improve type 2 diabetes. It turns out to be 300 times more powerful, 300% uh, more powerful than the best current diet because it gets the fat out of the cells. And our friends Jerry Schulman and Kit Peterson at Yale University take our patients, scan them through MR spectroscopy, and you can see the fat going away as their insulin sensitivity improves. And that's why we started seeing something no one ever saw before, which is insulin going away. So if, if you don't know how the hormones work and what causes it, your, your diabetes will not go away. But your diabetes can go away. Now, don't get me wrong. The body is imperfect in many ways. And you can be on a healthy diet and things can still happen. Um, but the healing power of the body is something you don't want to not take advantage of. <laughs> Put it to work. Whatever other treatment you need, don't neglect that one um, and see what you can do. And, and for some people, their diabetes will improve. Others, it'll go away completely. But I say, let's just go for it and see what happens. So. You, you know, I, it strikes me that so few people, I feel like, know about this. You know, everybody still equates diabetes with sugar. And, and a lot of people, I don't think, even realize that it's possible to send your diabetes into remission and fully reverse it in a lot of cases. So you were talking earlier before we were recording this episode and trying to encourage everybody here to go out and to spread the word. And 
I think that you hit the nail on the head when you said that the majority of people here tonight are already on that path, but I think that I can speak for... Well, there might be one or two people who are dragged here by somebody else. All right, well, let, well let's talk to those people who are dragged. Welcome to the cult. We'll show you the secret handshake on the way out. So. <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, how do you, how do you begin those conversations with somebody and, and try to plant that seed, so to speak, and, and try to get them on the right path. Okay. All right. Um, if you were dragged here by somebody else um, and you thought, I'm not sure I believe this, but it sounds like it might be a good thing. Um, here's, the, here's the way that we test out the, the, the diet in people. And I've never seen anybody unable to do this. What you do is you take one week and during these seven days, try out plant-based foods. So if every morning you have sausage for breakfast, go to the store and get vegan sausage. And if you like it, you can have it. If you don't like it, throw it away, you know, whatever. Um, if every morning you have cornflakes with milk, try almond milk. Is it any good? I don't know. Let's, now's your chance to try it. You've got seven days. Um, I go to Subway for lunch. Uh, will they make me a vegan sub? Will they? They will? Okay, I'm going to try it. Um, every night I go Italian. And instead of the Alfredo sauce, do they have a tomato sauce? I don't know, I'll try it. So you've got seven days, and the goal in these seven days is to find breakfasts, lunches, and dinners that if you were avoiding animal products would work for you. Write them down. It, it, it doesn't take seven days to do this, but we're gonna give you a week. Then step two is after you got your list, take three weeks and do it vegan, all, no animal products, for three weeks. But that's easy now because it's only three weeks. You can do anything for three weeks. The other thing is you've already figured out the foods that you like. You stock up and you do it. And at the end of that period of time, if you've done it right, no animal products, keeping oils pretty low, two things will have happened. First is physically, you're losing weight, your blood sugar is coming down, your energy is better, your digestion is sorting itself out, you're sleeping better. But the other thing is that your feelings about foods are changing. You don't miss those, those things so much. And you thought you would, but you sort of don't care and you're finding new things that are really cool. And you suddenly discover that a lot of other people are doing this too. Um, and there are products out there and there are websites out there and there are books and there are movies. And there's a whole bunch of people talking about this and getting really excited. So then after three weeks, you can decide, I wanna do it for another week. Or it, it's totally up to you. But you break it into steps. Step one, take a week to find the foods then step the three weeks, put it to work, and no long-term commitment, focus on the short-term, see what happens. It's a question, uh, there's a, a doctor in the house who was, uh, I believe the impression I got was that he is probably the only one who is interested in plant-based nutrition in his practice. He was curious about how he would refer people over to a plant-based doctor. I know that we have the wonderful Barnard Medical Center. Any advice for him? Um, well, that, that's what I would say, is, okay. is, the, the <laughs> is that what I'm supposed to say? I, I think so. Okay. The address okay. is 5100 you. Wisconsin Avenue. It's up on the fourth floor. <laughs> okay, Water all right. Well, well, let me tell you why we started this, actually. Um, it was 2015, and to see a medical doctor to, and to get started with a vegan diet, you had to be in one of our research protocols, and that was relatively few people. And so we thought, well, let's just hire some people and let's start a clinic. And that's what we've done. And we have three physicians, a nurse practitioner, four dietitians, Ben? Five? Four? Um, and everybody from the front desk staff to the billing staff and everybody, they all follow a healthy vegan diet. Um, and it's just the coolest thing in the world. And I have to say, it's good for the patients, but it's good for the docs too, because they all had come from what they would describe as a factory, diagnose, prescription, diagnose, prescription, they get burned out. And with us, nobody uses that word. It's um, just a cool place to be. So um, come see us if you, if you would like to. It's a nonprofit. We take all uh, insurances. Or, or if you don't have insurance, we'll see you. So we'd love to, love to help you. Dr. Barnard, thank you very much for being here this evening. Thank you, Chuck Carroll. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, thank you, everybody. Thanks for spending your evening with us. If you like that interview and you want more of it, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Leave a nice comment below. And for the full interview, also head over to Apple Podcasts and subscribe to the Exam Room Podcast by the Physicians Committee. New episodes with information and inspiration each and every Wednesday.